Hello, my name is Jonathan Jesse Practice Prince with ITS Partners. I want to thank you for watching this video and spending time with me today. This is a video, a part of our series on semantic DLP, data loss prevention. Um, other videos in this series include uh, an overview of uh, semantic DLP and network monitor, uh, semantic uh, DLP and policies and how policy works, um, focusing on network discover and network prevent for data at rest. Uh, this video is going to focus on data on the endpoint, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Ah, first problem in my demo, I did not remember how to type my password correctly. Let's go ahead and log back in. Um, I'm going to log in as administrator. So what I've done is I'm actually working off of my client box here for a second. Um, did you see that I have a certificate error? Uh, that's because I'm running in a self-signed certificate. Um, if we were actually doing this production environment, we'd have a, a better certificate. So I don't want you to focus on that. I want you to focus more on the DLP product. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get started here. This is my Windows 7 box. I am using a, a cloud service to host my VMs. Um, but I've logged into the data loss prevention website, the management platform in force. I have logged in as administrator, as you can see right here at the top. So I do have access to all portions of the system. Let's go ahead and clean this up for a minute. There you go. All right. The first page that we see here is we do see a summary of all of the incidences that are uh, happening in my organization on the endpoint. Um, policy summaries, you see most of my problems are um, in regards to um, a driver's license, and let's kind of talk our way through some of these reports. Uh, in previous videos, I haven't focused much on the, the reporting portion of it, but let's go ahead and spend some time now. You can see the different um, policies and then the status high, medium, low. Um, remember in our policy video, we talked about how to set those different uh, policy thresholds. Uh, you can see a summary, which is actually going to uh, break it out by status. Take a look at who our highest offenders are. So um, Mr. Rabbit and Mr. Jesse are our highest offenders in my demo environment. Shame on them. And also the location. Um, uh, most of them have been actually off the corporate network. Um, I do have some that have been on the corporate network. Let's go ahead and um, jump right into back to our executive summary here. Um, and then incidents is all. We haven't spent time on filters and summarizations, but what you can see is we can actually start to um, build in um, a reporting. We can save these reports. Um, we can apply different filters. Um, I can add multiple filters and stack these in. Um, and you can see exactly the type of information that I can report against, whether that was the agent response, the application name, the source file, all kinds of different ways that we can slice and dice the different information that shows up in our uh, DLP system. Um, we can save these reports, um, we can export these reports, um, we can build workflows based around these different reports based on how organization is set up to operate. Let's go ahead and just um, leave this here, we'll kind of remove the filter so we kind of cleaned up our reports. A couple of things that you can see. You see the, the machine that is happening on, all on the same machine here. Um, we see who it, um, the user was. Now, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned in any of the other videos that I want to call out here is that we can set up different sec security levels and um, limit what their different workers see, um, whether that's a level one, level two, however our organization wants to define our DLP workers. Dive right into this incident here. Uh, we can see that um, the policy that was violated was um, a social security policy. We can see that there were three matches here. Um, we can take a look of um, uh, the server that generated it on, the user was notified, and the user did generate a response, and we'll talk about how that's set up. Um, we see the application. Um, I am using um, uh, OpenOffice or LibreOffice, the, um, just so I don't have uh, licensing conflictions here. And then we can actually see what window it was in the system. See the history behind it. 
um, the status, any notes that were made. You can also see correlations. Um, you can see both that machine, the user, and the policy over you know, the last seven days, the last 30 days, or over all time. Let's go ahead and go back into the key info section. Um, so what happens when this end user generated a policy? They are actually notified. Um, I'm not doing any prevention here. I'm just doing notification of um, the incident. And I will actually will show you how that works. Hopefully everything in the demo um, pops up correctly. Um, so this is, um, this is working with DLP on the endpoint. All right, so how do I set this up? How do we configure? So let's go ahead and go to System. Um, agents and overview. Um, this is the overview of the different agents and you can see that I have two machines set up my domain controller and also my v, uh, my Windows 7 box. Why am I running in my domain controller? Just in a demo environment um, just to set up more more agents. So um, let's go ahead and we can click on on that guy and find out um, information to see exactly what's happening within that um, agent, um, where that agent is running, if we have any problems with that agent, etc. Uh, endpoint locations, we can build multiple locations for our endpoint servers. I mean, we can assign those manually um, or automatically based on um, the agent's ability to communicate with an endpoint server. Uh, in my organization, if I have a large number of endpoints, um, I can disperse these endpoint servers so that they're local to the management platform, or sorry, local to that endpoint server, and there's not a lot of WAN traffic. Um, if you think about it in maybe a semantic endpoint protection level, maybe an Altiris level, um, these would be like my local site servers or my local group update servers. I could disperse those there, and it would, uh, it would talk to them directly. What I really want to spend some time in is, is how do we configure the DLP agent and what are we monitoring? How does that DLP agent work with our end, existing endpoint protection, with McAfee, um, Trend, Semantic, um, what, whatever endpoint protection product that I'm currently running? I want to go ahead. I'm just running off of the default one, but uh, we can have multiple configurations. We can assign those to different endpoint servers. But let's go ahead and talk our way through this. Um, I'm just going to uh, increase the size here, the zoom for a minute, so we can read it without having to squint. So the first place I want to talk about is removable storage. Um, what is our company's policy on removable storage? Uh, do we block all removable media, uh, removable storage? I'm talking about you know um, USB drives. I'm talking about um, SDHC cards, um, SIM cards. You know, removable media. How do we deal with that? We might be using an endpoint protection product to limit or block removable media. Um, we might be using that endpoint protection product to only allow a certain type of removable media. Um, endpoint protection products don't deal with the content of the file that might be copied to that removable media. So we standardize on a, on a certain type of USB drive, for example. Uh, and we set up either a group policy or through endpoint protection to limit to that particular um, removable drive. Nothing in that um, policy, whether it's group policy or, or endpoint protection is saying, okay, this is the type of content that can be copied to that allowable uh, USB drive. Uh, those products don't care. Um, they just care that you're, uh, it, it's the corporate USB drive. A DLP product can help us to say, okay, um, now let's monitor what type of data is copied over to our corporate USB drive. Um, on the CD, DVD side, uh, whether or not we want to be able to burn information over to those devices um, and how that works, monitor the local drive. Uh, if we're saving confidential data to the local drive, are we allowed to do that? Um, print facts and clipboard. Um, Am I allowed to go file print, copy paste, file fax, and send that information out to the printer? Um, I might have different printers set up based on the uh, level of security for, for those devices, um, but how do I monitor the content that is, that is going out of that? So 
uh, file print, file fax, and also copy paste. Uh, the example here is I have maybe um, an accounting uh, document or maybe I'm forced to work within a Citrix environment to connect to specific applications. But what's preventing me from copying data from that particular application and pasting that into an email or to a Word document? Uh, DLP on the endpoint would allow me to prevent that. Um, how do we deal with HTTPS traffic in our environment? Well, we can monitor HTTPS traffic um, on Firefox and also Internet Explorer uh, because we're interfacing at the application layer and not at the networking layer. Um, and we can see it first. Uh, what about network shares? Am I allowed to copy from um, a network share to my local drive? Am I allowed to copy to a share? How does DLP on the endpoint deal with that? And then um, AIM, MSN, and Yahoo Messenger. Really what we're doing is blocking it before it hits that data in motion um, area. right? So network monitor allows us to deal with data in motion. Um, de uh, endpoint uh, prevent allows me to uh, deal with uh, data um, on my endpoint agent. This is really how we want to configure our system. Um, we can also talk about um, uh, bandwidth throttling, the store of the agent size, average CPU space, um, and dealing with the battery. If my laptop is on battery and I reach a certain percentage, um, do I stop that discover scan? Uh, what's the um, average, long-term average of CPU usage when I'm running a discover scan on my laptops or my endpoints? And then there's all kinds of advanced agent settings I want to deal with. I just want to make sure that, you know, we talk within our organization and say, this is the data that is allowed at the endpoint, right? Um, we allow removable media of a certain type uh, through group policy, through endpoint protection, and we, we don't allow the content of that data to be copied to our, our authorized standard. Or we don't want people printing confidential data and, and taking it home with them. Um, we don't want them copying and pasting it or sending it via email out to a confidential in environment. And then also we can monitor and scan um, local systems and local drives, network properties, etc. Um, let's go ahead and if you have any questions on anything I say, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email, by the way. Um, let's go ahead and go back to my response rules. I'm zoomed in a little, so if the text is a little, a little wonky, that's why. This is my endpoint notification rule. So I've applied this rule or this uh, response rule to uh, multiple policies. And what I do it is, you know, give it a name, give it a description, and then here are the policies that are applied to. Okay, so what happens? Well, I am not going to do any uh, prevention in this. Um, I'm still in that case where I'm doing. Uh, user education and user notification. So something happens and I want the user to notify that. More importantly, I want that user to um, display a pop-up alert. Um, I want it to have um, a couple of uh, variables. So the content type and content name that I'm attempting to move, copy, save, or transfer potentially contains sensitive information that violates the following security policy and then actually lists that policy that I'm going to violate. Um, I can add my free text in here as well if I want. Then I'm going to allow that user to choose an explanation. So user education, I didn't know that transferring this data was restricted. Um, this is part of an established business process. My manager approved this transfer or it was a false positive. We can then report on the different um, uh, user responses that, that were taken as well. So. Let's go ahead. I uh, hope my demo here works. Minimize that. So what I'm using, um, I'm using um, uh, OpenOffice Calculator, LibreOffice Calculator. And I have this spreadsheet here. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to copy some information here. And I should get a notification, a pop-up. It's going to say, you know, what the heck were you trying to do? So. Uh, uh, the clipboard content that I'm trying to move, copy, save, or transfer potentially contains sensitive information that it violates the following security policies. So um, this is the uh, pop-up that the end user gets. My manager approved this transfer of data. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we 
flip back to our uh, instances. 11.55, here's my information. Here's the stuff that I was copying. My manager approved this transfer of information. So now we can then correlate, we can report against this, both of the machine, the user, the IP address, etc. There's a way of notifying the user that what they're doing is wrong and allows them to self-educate what they're doing. So back to DLP on the endpoint, right? It's working in conjunction with my endpoint uh, protection product. Remember, it's focused on the content of the f information, um, not necessarily the context of what's happening. The content uh, provides a very good, um, uh, but it can really improve on your endpoint protection product. So I, I block uh, malware, I block viruses, I maybe use encryption, I, um, I, I block removable media. Now let's, let's deal with other areas that uh, potential data loss, file print, file fax, file copy, uh, maybe sending within Outlook itself. Um, I'm using, I'm only allowed to use um, IE and I can monitor HTTP and HTTPS traffic. So there's all kinds of ways that a DLP endpoint product can complement uh, an endpoint protection product. I think complement was the word I was looking for earlier. So this is a brief overview of DLP on the endpoint and how it works um, and how it's configured. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. And uh, thank you for watching this video.